the clap. That means we're started. What are you doing? I'm making sure I'm not popping a button or nothing's hanging out or... <laughs> Well, hello, my love. How are hello, you? Hello, I'm good. Good we, morning. Um, I was just talking to um, Jerry over at Aztec Chevrolet, and, and we are going to do a, a little bit of a boys' night um, Thursday after Dallas. And he was like, oh, man, it's my birthday, so we might have some uh, oh. We might have some Aztec Chevrolet guys um, showing up to do a little boys' night with us. Yeah. So, yep. So we're very excited about that. You look skinny that. today. Oh, I got a haircut. I went and got a haircut. Oh. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's a haircut. I'm not skinnier. <laughs> I should get a haircut every day. It makes me look skinnier. Um, but big thank you to Aztec Chevrolet. Guys, if you're going to buy a vehicle, give them a chance, please. Please, please, please. So, and then of course, Old Salt Coffee, Trevino 10. That is your promo code. You're going to buy coffee anyway. Yeah. Have it delivered to the house. It tastes like freedom. And it is ran and operated by... Um, veterans. So please, please, please. Your mustache looks different too. I'm like just now actually like looking at your face. Like what, what is it? What's happening? I got a haircut. <laughs> What's happening with it you? It looks very like, I don't know what it is. Why are we talking about me? <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody that said a message, uh, that I read that said, uh, I'm over the podcast because Renee's head just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <gasps> so that's, I hadn't uh, read that comment. I, 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 I really enjoyed that comment. And, <laughs> it, it's, was it's, it a male or a female that said it? I'm curious. I don't, I, it was a female, I think. But it's, cool. um, it, you know, it's interesting because, you, you know, I, I take things so personal, uh -huh. and, you know, and it's so, uh, this podcast is so very real to us, you know, and, yeah. and you know, it, it is scary sometimes to, you know, put ourselves out there. Oh, for sure. You know, and, and I think sometimes when I get these... To overshare? Yeah, well, not only that. I mean, it's, you know, we, we want to be honest and we want to be real. And we hope that, that that people watch this podcast and enjoy the, you know, the funny, the sad, the the arguments, the yeah. the day-to-day -day conversations. But, you know, it is hard and, and we are people. And, and I for sure have moments where I feel like, because it's exactly what you said, right? We sit here and we talk about the day-to-day -day of our life. And I for sure have moments where I feel like, why are people that interested? Like in the day-to-day, -day? we literally just sit here and talk about the day-to-day -day of our life. Like, yeah, but I, it I, seems I, a little like e egotistical, right? Well, of course. And, and, but, but, but I... I was going to say, but at this, then I get messages like, actually, it's funny you bring this up because last night I got a message from a girl who said, I tune in every week on my way to work. She's like, and I was really struggling with depression and you guys make me laugh. <laughs> well, we try. We, we, well, you know, and, and it, it, I don't, you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's definitely a, um, you know, this podcast has its moments of funny and, and, yeah. you know, moments of, of real conversation. And, but I just told her, I responded back. I was like, if I, you know, cause she said she lost her mom and she's just been struggling since then. And I said, if I could hug you through this phone, through this message, I just want to squeeze you. And so, yes, I feel like it's very egotistical that we just sit here and talk about our day-to-day -day life. But if it, it's in some way a virtual hug or squeeze to that person. Well, I mean, that's, that's the goal. Cool and, and I hope that people also see that, that, you know, our relationship is perfectly imperfect. You know, you've and, said and, that before. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I think that I think that people need to see that. And I think that we do live in a world of every Instagram post is perfect. Nobody shares. Nobody shares the sad parts of their life. Oh, yeah. I know? only share the really cute ones, not the right. ones where Garrett's like snarling at me. Well, and, and not only that, with freaking <laughs> editing now and, and, you know, filters. And, yeah. you know, so we, we live we live our lives these days through a filter. And I think that it is a. a breath of fresh air that hey here's me and my wife who are you know perfectly imperfect and you know we are we are not perfect and we fight and we yeah. argue and we we have our struggles with day-to-day -day life just like right. everybody else you know and 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 even though we have had one episode that did not see the light of day for the most part However, we're we feeling aired them all. Yeah. You know, however, we're feeling that day. We we put it out there, and we hope that that you know people you know do not judge. Oh, but they know. do. They do. They do. They judge. do. And I, I just get frustrated with with people. 
in general. You know, I. You know. Well, no, yeah, you know, every show, no matter what, no matter how big, no matter how small, I always give it up to the men and women who serve our country. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. There's not a show that I don't do it. You know, um, and and every single show, people cheer. Sometimes they stand up. You know, mm-hmm. and they want to give it up to veterans, right? Yeah. But then. Last night, I on all of my platforms, uh-huh. I posted that me and you were going to have a, a pie challenge and a contest, and I'm asking for $25. Okay, so and that, what happened? Well, no, you, you just, it's, a, uh, it's amazing how little response we got, you know, and, and if, I, if I post a photograph of, of me and you being silly or, you know, you... Um, well, listen, maybe we got to sex that, that, sex? Uh, I mean, no, maybe we got to sex it up. Like take oh. the tank top off baby and like and give show, a little, a, uh, show a shirtless photo the for the pie challenge. But it, you know, it just bums me out because it's like, guys, I'm, and, and you know what, by the way, you don't have to give me $25. Can I get a like the amount, oh. the amount, I'm going to show you the amount of likes that I got and then we'll just go to Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Where I have a hundred thousand followers. Uh-huh. Let's just go to Instagram, okay? Um, oh, I think you're taking it too personally. No, I do take it personal because I'm trying to send pies to our service members yeah. while they are stuck, not at home. They're not with their parents. They're not well, with their friends. Well, let's see what happens. You haven't even given it a chance. Like, let's see. Just because people aren't liking doesn't mean they're not okay. buying a pie. Here we go. So the pie deal that I put up yesterday, 320 likes, one, two, three, four comments, four. Yeah. Right now. Oh, let's... but I saw, I posted it and people shared it too. And they said, buy a pie for Renee. So Steve gets a pie in the face. Here's a, here's a picture of me and you on our anniversary that I put about my queen, 2,374 likes. And the messages go on forever, forever. And it's like, you know, my thing is, is I'm not, you don't have to give me $25. You don't, but can I get a like? <laughs> can I get a, can I get a share? You sound like Garrett. How many likes? <laughs> no, I, it just, it bums me out because I assure you, I assure you if I said, Hey, right now I'm, you know, and we did a picture of me and you giving away a Captain Evil t-shirt, they would go crazy. Yeah. Likes, follows, right? But Hey. When I post something about let's go help our veterans and I see you cheering every single show and then the response on social media is like, oh, let's scroll past that. Well, maybe we need to get creative. Maybe we need to think of like a funny, a funny vet video that we can do. It just, you know, it it does bum me out. And I've noticed it in the past. You know, I've noticed it um, on my, my Facebook when it comes to. My family down in Gregory, Portland, you know, all the friends and family we grew up with, uh-huh. you know, when somebody is struggling and I post like, hey, so-and-so, you know, we're trying to do this for so-and-so. Yeah. man, all of a sudden, oh, well, I don't know who Steve Trevino is, you know, and it, it just, it bums me out. And, and I hope, I hope that, that people watch this podcast and go, okay. And go buy a pie for Renee. No, buy a pie for me. <laughs> but, well, and like I said. Sometimes it, it's maybe you don't have the 25 bucks and I understand that. Yeah. But don't ignore it. How about you share it? How about you like it? How about you put a comment? Good for you. What a great thing. So that at least other people can see it. Right. You know, so, so it plays into the algorithm. It, it plays into the algorithm. And, and I'm not, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of people, man, they don't have that extra 25 bucks. And I, I yeah. completely understand that. Maybe we make you some pie pasty nipple covers and you do a picture like that. Oh, we can do that. Yeah, oh, that's, that might um, get some attention. Maybe. Why? You're not on board with what I'm talking about. You think I'm being negative. <laughs> no, well, I just, I think you, what is it? You catch more, not you catch more bees with honey. What is it? What's the saying? You, I get it. I totally feel like a blonde right now. I get it. Which was not nice to blondes. I apologize. But you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Is you, that where we're at? <laughs> you know, is this where we're at in our country? Can't say anything. Um, <laughs> point is i just feel like we can have fun with it that's all right no i mean look we're going to continue to do it and and if i send five pies 
I'm happy. Oh, we're going to send more than five pies. Well, because I'm going to buy some well, for, for then, me. <laughs> I'm going to buy some so that I get to buy you in the face. So we got 10 pies right there. So, you know, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, Renee and I are running a contest. The win, whoever raises the most pies gets to pie the other one in the face. Last year, and, and maybe maybe we'll get Rick to do a little highlight reel of, of me, you pieing me in the face. Oh, I have some you know. good pictures of you covered in pie cream. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> 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 Rick said my screensaver. That's that's awesome. But so, you know, hopefully people get on board and, and yeah. um, donate because at the end of the day. That's what I'll do. I'll share pictures from last time because those were good. And I'll see if we can't spark some, yeah. some interest. So yeah, yeah. please help us. Please, you know, we're, we're always, 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 always here on uh, in the Trevino household trying to, to give back. You know? Yeah. Um, but to get into our week. Oh my gosh, dude. Like, well, first of all, how was, how, so Renee was a little late to the podcast and you know, we're all used to waiting on Renee. Um, <laughs> but that's why my hair isn't done. I don't have all my lashes. You volunteered today at the library. I did. How did they go? I helped with the school book fair. It's so cute to see the kids come in and be like so excited about shopping the book fair. Oh, I remember the book fair when I was growing up. Well, that's up. Like, what the librarian was saying is she's like, you know, because I asked her, I was like, does the school actually like make a decent profit off of this for all the work it is for her to set all that stuff up, you know? And she's like, well, she's like, there are better ways for the school to make money. She's like, but the kids get so excited. She's like, don't you remember going to the book fair as a kid? And I was like, yeah, actually well, I, I do. I just think that it's really cool that, that there still is a book fair, you know, with all this digital uh-huh. stuff. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, my cousin Lori... She is a librarian uh-huh. at a deaf school, yeah. and and I sat down with her. I'm like, so, how does it work now? You know, are you still teaching the card catalog? <laughs> Remember the card? You'd yeah. pull it out, like, and go through and in, in alphabetical order and try yes. to find that book. But I would assume now there is no card catalog. Oh well, you search the freaking a tablet, yeah. and it sends you. To where you are. So it is really cool that there still is a, a physical book. Yeah. Well, book. they sell erasers and pointers and all kinds of pens bullshit. and pencils. Yes. Hey, you want to buy some bullshit for your <laughs> kids? Because so they showed up and the kids would have like piles of junk and she would be like, I think your parents would like you to go pick out one book. Like, yeah, how about a book? Put something yeah. back with your budget. And it's so cute to see the kids who like, they want to spend every penny. Like if their right. parents sent them with a gift well, card, they're spending every penny of that gift card. Did our son get to go? He did, but I felt so bad. I was so busy. There was such a long line of kids at the register that I didn't even get to shop with him. And he came with this pile of stuff. And the uh, parent was like, um, and I was like, it's okay. He's mine. I'll check him out. So I don't know what he bought. I'll have to look when but I go back. he did buy a bunch but, of stuff? But he bought a bunch of stuff. Yeah. That's good. I, and I, look, I have no problem buying books. Yeah. You know, buying books and, and Garrett really like, you know, I am not the best reader. Um, so Garrett will come to me with like, and it's, it's, he's six now. So I, I read at a, I, we're done. I, I read at a, oh, I read at a, a first grade that. level. So that's after this, I'm true. done, that's but, but it's true. really cool that he comes to me and goes, can you read this book to me? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he loves to read books. Yeah. You know, oh, and, well, I was such a book nerd. So I, I was a little bummed that I didn't like actually get to shop the book fair with him. So we'll, we'll see what he picked up. Well, and and you know, you, you also find out that these studies of they're like, Oh my gosh, the parents that read to their kids, those kids have such a, a better chance academically. Yeah. You know? And so, and you think about it, like I don't, you know, and, and I mean this, no offense to my parents. I don't remember my parents reading to me. You know, but how old was I mean, have you said on the podcast that you're dyslexic? Have we said that before? I don't know. We have. I, I, you know, I don't know if we've talked about my dyslexia. Well, and especially when I, when I was coming up, you know, dyslexia was kind of like. The, That's what I was going to say is like, how long did it go before you actually realized and were diagnosed as being dyslexic? I don't think I was ever officially diagnosed with being dyslexic. I, I do remember. And I guess because I was a good kid and, and I was charming and very attractive that the, <laughs> <laughs> that the teachers, I remember the teacher specifically trying to help me, Yeah. you know, and really trying to, and it's really interesting to me because I, I, I do run into a lot of people, you know, and you know me, I'm Mr. Super creative people who are dyslexic. Is that what you were going to say? Super successful people. Yeah. You know, I run into, I mean, my best friend, my cousin, Abel. 
you know, he was here the other day. He's a very successful businessman. Uh-huh. And he really understands the, the politics of business. He really knows how to run a business. Um, he has great ideas and thoughts. And he has, he has taken his, his grandfather's business and has really taken it to the next level. And, yeah. and me and him were literally talking about dyslexia and how both of us were dyslexic. And, and you know, I remember specifically teachers like, okay, Steve does need a little extra time. Right. And we're going to find ways. And, and my reading comprehension was always really high. I always understood exactly what I was reading. It just took me a long time. Yeah. But that's what I mean. I feel like if it had been identified early on, as far as your confidence, well, and I, you wouldn't have felt so self-conscious about it as a kid. Well, you would have just known, like, I have this and this is what I do. To- well, and it was a bummer for me because I, sometimes I would give up because, you know, the teacher would say, okay, we're going to read this paragraph and then we're going to talk about it. So everybody read to yourselves mm-hmm. and then they'll give us like an allotted amount of time. Well, they're like, she's like, time. And I'm like, oh crap, I really tried to read this paragraph in the allotted amount of time I didn't even get close we'll talk about standardized tests right Right. it's all like time tests where you have to read and answer the questions like but but I you know because of dyslexia my memory is through the roof because I was always embarrassed to write because my handwriting was shit yeah you know and I was always embarrassed to read out loud so my memory and my ability to remember things and as you know I don't record my sets I don't write down my sets. Mm -mm. I don't, I don't prepare before I go. And that's another thing. Rick, Rick especially freaks out. Yeah. Rick's like, dude, you're talking to me mid sentence while they're saying your name. And then you walk on stage and do it. And I don't, I don't think that for me, I just do it. I think what Steve's talking about is that like before he goes on stage, he's not like, hey, let's clear the green room and give me five minutes to like get my head in the game before I walk on stage. Steve is like no prep time, like joking with everyone and then just walks right on stage. And most performers need a minute just to like well, we, we, meditate or gather themselves. We, we had that issue when we were filming Relatable where um, the producers were like, get everybody out of his green room. He has to be on stage in 15 minutes. He needs a second to rest. He needs a second. And I'm like, I don't. Yeah. I don't need that second to rest. Me walking on stage and, and, but I think it also helps that the stories I tell on stage were real. I'm not memorizing a script. I'm up there telling a real story. Yeah. You know, and then of course I'm embellishing and adding and, and, you know. I don't know. I just think of like how your stories morph over time and change and there is no written record of that morph morphing in that process and I just think it would be cool to have that you know especially because when you're filming a special sometimes you leave things out that you meant to put in and there's I'm 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 editing in my head you know when we filmed um the HBO deal and they're like oh you need you're doing 10 minutes Right. So now I'm used to doing an hour and 15 on they stage. They were nervous too because they didn't have a transcript. They right. were like, what is this cat so going to say? So I'm literally taking, you know, bits out, jokes out of bits to get to where I need to get from beginning to end. And I'm just editing on stage while I'm up there. And, and you know, I'm talking, but in my head, I'm thinking of four different things yeah. while I'm in autopilot talking. And then I'm like, oh, okay, change this, change that. But, but I, I, I attribute that to my dyslexia. And I, yeah. think that, I think that if you are dyslexic, you know, and, and much like being blind, if you are blind, then your other senses are heightened. are heightened. And I think because I was dyslexic, I am dyslexic, other skills have been heightened. Yeah, right? for sure. And I think that, I, and we, me and you talk about this all the time because you were, you were such an A student Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I go, man, if there was a school that taught the way I learned. Yes. Right. Cause I'm, we're in a system where they only, they're catering to the they majority. They teach to standardized tests so that they get paid what they need to. Well, but, but they teach in certain ways because the majority of people are like you, right? Yeah. And there's very few dyslexic people. So they're not going to go out of their way to just, but um, if there was a, a class that taught specifically the way, and it was funny because, you know, Mr. Helm, 
I love Mr. Helm's class, uh-huh. right? And Mr. Helm was this surfer dude with a mullet and a mustache uh-huh. and he'd get on. I mean, it was like he was on stage and he'd be running around the class and he'd, you know, be laughing and writing on the wall and everything was a million miles an hour. <laughs> I loved it. And funny enough that me and you were talking about it and you're like, uh-huh. I fucking hated that class. <laughs> I did poorly in that class. And I'm like, well, now you know how I feel in all the other classes. Yeah. So how you felt in his class, uh-huh. that one period, that how one you felt year all day long. Yeah. is how I felt all the time where this, this is boring to me. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't want to sit here. And even in my life now, I can't sit still. I don't want to sit down. I want to do stuff. I want to be involved. I want to be yeah. touching things. And, and it's really interesting. And I don't know if you agree or not, but Garrett is is a real combination of the of two, the two of, us. of us. I was about to say the exact same thing, not knowing that's where you were going. He is a real combination of the two of us. You yes. know, G- Garrett does want to touch things and hang and ha- and be involved and and make it hands on, but he's also a very follow the rules. Well, he wants to get it right. I want to get it right, yeah. and we have to follow the rules, and this is how you do it. And I'm a I'm a I'm a, a rule breaker. Yeah. You know, I I, I definitely ride that line, but. You know, you, you, I've learned so much uh, about dyslexia because I, I spend hours reading short paragraphs, uh, <laughs> but you know, and, and I was explaining to Abel and Abel was, was really interested because he had, he didn't know. He and didn't know what, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that the reason that I read so slowly is because I am a, a dyslexic person is a problem solver, Right. And a word is a problem. Mm-hmm. So when I, and I did a joke about it in Grandpa Joe's son, when I read a word, I'm trying to read the word. Uh-huh. You don't read words. No, I have them memorized. You have every word memorized and you know what they look like. Cause it's funny. I'll ask you to spell something and uh-huh. you can't spell it. No, and, I'll be like, unless, ask Google. That's what no, Google's for. Unless you write it down. Yes, I have to write it down and see it and know that it's correct. Yeah. Right, and I have trouble spelling because the English language, the way that it is set up, yeah, is not right. Yeah, you know, I always talk about the word "should," right? When I read "should" and there's an "l" in "should," right, and you're taught, "Hey, sound it out, solve the problem." So when I try to solve the problem, it takes me a minute because I don't have should memorized. Yeah. I should, <laughs> but I don't. Um, but you know, when I was explaining that to Abel, he was like, Oh man, like I never, I never realized that. Yeah. You know? And, and I, and I also think that, that dyslexia, number one, it's a real thing. And number two, I don't think that there's enough dyslexic kids that if you're in public school, I wonder what the numbers are. Now that you say that, I'm curious. Hey Rick, you have you have three boys, and by the way, dyslexia is more um, prevalent in boys. In males. Yep. Do do any of your boys um, have dyslexia? Not that I know of. I, I mean, we haven't we haven't checked them. Uh, they're they're one of our, our our youngest is struggling a little bit with reading, so maybe it's a possibility. It's hard to know too, because for it's hard to know. in the beginning, Garrett would get his B's and his D's mixed up, you know, which is kind of like a sign. But he's also in kindergarten, so that's kind of normal too. Right. I forget what age they test them at. I think it might not be till first grade, first or second grade. No, it's um, it's definitely something that that I had to overcome, and and I but I also think that it, it also led to to my success and me being a driven person. You know. Yeah. Um, and then it's also interesting that there was another teacher that absolutely loved you and hated me. I can't remember which teacher. I don't want to say any names. <laughs> um, but for those of you back home, he was in the movie Legend of Billy Jean as an extra. And he was in drama. But, I mean, this guy not only disliked me, had it out for me. I mean, this guy was super... Oh, that makes me, me, that makes me sad when you say that. Like, I mean, kids, kids remember things so differently, right? So like your, not, not to discredit your feelings or anything, but your memory of the situation could be very different than this particular teacher's memory of the situation. Sure. And And I like the way that you're defending not your husband. (laughs) No, I didn't say that. 
I just mean like that, that makes me, I feel like no child, no student should ever feel like their teacher doesn't like them. Even if the teacher doesn't. Oh, look, that happened to me. I just feel like the kid shouldn't, the kid shouldn't know that. I mean, that happened to me quite a bit. I mean, I remember, you know, me and you in Chili's in Portland running into a teacher okay. and her coming over and just hugs and kisses all over you. And oh my God, Renee. And then you were like, what's wrong? And I go, she was mean to me. Yeah. You know, like, like mean. Yeah. And you were like, oh, there's no way. And I'm like, oh no, she was mean to me. But I, I think that me struggling with dyslexia and teachers not knowing how to handle that. Well, right. too, right? And like you're a child of divorced parents and like you don't know what's going on in a child's private life and that how that affects them as well. I had none of this was planned for today for the <laughs> podcast, but uh, here we are. <laughs> I'm sorry I took but, it somewhere else all because I helped no, at the okay. book fair. But was it a good experience? Were oh there, yeah, it was lovely. Were there it was other, so lovely. Were there other moms there? Um, there was, uh, I think she, she's probably a grandma. There was a grandma there who was helping the kids. Uh, it just got crazy in the morning cause the kindergartners don't know how to, you know, the younger ones don't know how to count money and make change. So they like come with 15 books. I want all of this. And you're like, uh, oh, you have to do the math put back, them. put back, yeah. put back, you know, which one do you really want? So, yeah. right. so it made me realize I really got to work with Garrett on his counting money. That's important. Yes, it is counting, counting money is very, very important. <laughs> and then I was laughing because I'd feel so bad because a kid would come up and they'd be like a few pennies short, you know, or they'd be like 50 cents short. And I'd be like, can I just like pay for the 50 cents, right? So how many kids' so they, books did we buy? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a boy who came, right? And he didn't have enough money. And I was like, it was like a dollar over, but he had multiple items. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to pay it. You know, like I'll, I'll have him put something back. Like this one I won't pay for, you know? Right. And uh, Renee is cheap. I don't know if you're learning... <laughs> I don't know if you're no. learning that when it comes to other people no. and like tipping and helping no. out, Renee's very cheap. Mouth. Shut your mouth. No, anyway, so then I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, honey. You don't have enough for for this. And he's like, it was like a pin, right? Like a janky pin. And so I was like, let's put this back because then you can get all the rest of this. And then he's like, well, and the kid has a lot of cash in his pocket. He was holding on. He wanted to wait and see if I was going to cover it. Wow. <laughs> I want to meet his parents. That is a strong move. That is a very strong move. So I, I had a lot of fun actually. And then well, I'm glad to hear because you know you've been really kind of itching to volunteer um, at the school, and I was yeah. really bummed out for you because I get back from um, uh, Tampa, which by the way, Tampa was great shows, all sold out. I love Florida. And you know what? You asked me if I wanted to go to Tampa, and it didn't even register that like that was our anniversary. Like we could have been together. We just well, didn't, we didn't plan that one. It's been tough, and and yeah. I, I am proud of us that that we have been married long enough, and we are secure in our relationship to go. Well, and by the way, oh my gosh, I I, had, I bought you a surprise, <laughs> and, then, and I don't know if people feel this way like us, but I'm so like scams have become so good. Yes, that everything feels like a scam. Yeah. Because it's so real, so I, I you wanted because no, we'll get letters to our oh address that say you have a ticket in El Paso, and I'll be like that we owe five hundred bucks for a ticket we didn't pay, and I'll be like Steve, why didn't you just tell me about I'm this? Like, I don't have a ticket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it's so crazy. So you know, I I bought Renee a clutch. She wanted a, a black leather clutch. Um, so I, I went online. I bought it, and that morning when I left to Tampa, I was real excited, and I said, "Baby, happy anniversary." I love you, but there's a special surprise coming for you this yeah. weekend. Then I get to Tampa, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, your, your order has completely been canceled. I'm like, what? So then I had to let the cat out of the bag and go, <laughs> yeah, hey, Renee, Renee, help me. Like, <laughs> Can you fix this? I tried to buy you something. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So then I call the lady, and the lady's like, well, um, we're going to have to recharge your card. So then I call my bank and my bank's like, no, we approve that charge. And I'm Let's... like, Steve, what janky ass website were you shopping yeah, at? Yeah, then Renee was like, well, is it even the official website? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I tried to make sure it was the official. I mean, it was, so we just said, fuck it, we're not doing it. Because we were so scared that it was a scam. Yeah. But I'm also proud of us that, that you know, you didn't get me anything at all. 
and I didn't even try. No, and- y'all remember last year for our anniversary, I tried to plan something nice. I planned oh the my yurt God. trip. <laughs> Fuck that yurt trip. And By the way, <laughs> you were like, you were so grumpy at the yurt trip. I'm in a fucking yurt. It's 30 degrees outside. I had to pee out the door because the restroom was outside. It was pouring down rain, 30 degrees. <laughs> my point is, I tried to plan something. And it was and so cold, were- I had to get really close to the door to make sure I didn't pee on the <laughs> frozen that's how damn oh my cold gosh, it was dude. Um, but so i was like i'm not gonna plan anything this year because i tried to be secretive and plan something no, but, nice and it all went to shit but but i think that that you know we're not at a point in our relationship where we go you know oh my gosh she didn't get me anything and vice versa mm-hmm. you know and, yeah. and we know we love each other and we know um that we've i'll book the uh, yard again it's okay oh fuck yeah <laughs> try to book it in like january or february when it's <laughs> And you know what? Do it in Alaska. Let's go get a, <laughs> let's go get a real fucking yurt. How about that? Um, but, but, uh, you know, so I, I, we were so afraid there was a scam and then, so that sucked. And then uh, of course I get to see, you know, Troy and, and, and Carrie, um, in Tampa. And uh-huh. I didn't post any pictures of me on a jet ski this year. <laughs> I didn't want any drama. So I just kept my, my Your jet fun ski. Your photos yes, to yourself. I kept them to myself, <laughs> especially when it's our anniversary weekend. But it was just, it was great shows and it's such a great comedy club and, and locally owned and the owner, because he's short staffed, was just, I mean, he did everything. Yeah. I mean, the guy was waiting tables. The guy was doing just everything he could. And then we had a very special fan come through, family, and yes. it was her birthday and, and we had her backstage. Andrea, and, yeah. Andrea. And, and we were, I was bummed because right next to her is a girl who would not shut up oh no and then she ends up sending me a message saying that like they had i not intervened because that several times i had to stop and go shh yeah yeah and, and to the point where she's like it's her it's that bitch you know and then you know andrea and, and her girlfriend you know uh-huh. were like like we don't know what fuck you i mean it was bad it was bad and i was oh. so bummed and and finally i got her and, and that by the way if you're ever wondering how I, I handle hecklers, mm-hmm. I try to handle hecklers in the most polite, respectful way. Because if I'm respectful, if I'm a good guy, right, uh-huh. then people understand. Yeah. And they get on my side. Yeah. If I'm aggressive and mean to people. And, and I then also it makes understand, it uncomfortable. you know, we had a, we had a, a, a couple, an- another girl there uh-huh. who was just really chatty. Right. And, and I would kind of calm her down and quiet mm-hmm. her down. And then, cause, and then again, you never know. Right. Is this all in the same show, by the way, or was this different? Different shows. shows. Again? You okay. know, so then I get a message from, from a personal, <clears throat> a private message. Uh-huh. And he goes, man, thank you for not kicking us out. She's so embarrassed. She just drank too much. Yeah. She doesn't remember much, you know, so you never know what's going on. Right. Right. You, you know, he goes, man, he goes, I made the mistake of, you know, we were going out, so we started drinking at three. We were very excited. Yeah. By the time we got to your show, she was drunk. And, and you know what? That happens. Yeah. And I can forgive that. I've been too drunk before. Yeah. I've been, I've acted like a, an idiot more times than I can count. Yeah. So, you know, I try to be really polite with, but it was, it was a bummer because this girl was just, and <laughs> I always love when the, the girl, like, the girl's like running her mouth and just, nom, 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 you know, just with her attitude <laughs> How? and, nom, How nom, 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 you know. <laughs> And then, but her husband's like this, dude. Like when I'm talking to her, dude, her, and he's like, shut up. Like, sh- he's like looking at her like, please just stop. Right. Which is good because sometimes when I, when I go, Hey, can you keep it down? Oh. And then if the husband is drunk too, then he gets mad and aggressive because right. you're talking to his wife. That's yeah, when Don't be bad. talking to my wife. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. but this situation, he was like. <laughs> and you can tell, dude, he was so embarrassed. He was like, oh my God, like, please. It's like when you get really mad uh-huh. and, and aggressive uh-huh. and there's no fucking talking you off the ledge. Uh-huh. I'm just like this. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry that my wife is losing her shit because <laughs> you put a tomato in her hamburger. Shut your mouth. <laughs> like, the fuck is a tomato in my hamburger? 
Usually because they won't honor my coupon. No, I'm but, kidding. But Tampa was greater than I, I felt that. Because I, oh, I, you know what? I could tell it was a, a cool crowd in Tampa because you know what I thought was so neat is I posted something on social media. I can't remember what it was. And so, this, someone commented that they were at your show this weekend. And then someone responded back. They were like, oh, we were at the table next to you. It was so nice to meet you. And I was like, how cool that like people met at your show. And then they're like commenting back and forth on social media. Well, I think and, that was fun. And, and we also had a... Um, uh, a girl who came to three shows with different groups of friends. Wow. And, and, and that blows my mind. You know, it really That's just, awesome. it really blows my mind. And it, it's like, That's awesome. It's like, wow, man, you know, and, and such good people in Tampa. And, and we, we just had a really great weekend. And then I felt bad because, um, oh, and then, then I met a guy and through Dan. Uh huh. And I don't want to say who his famous father was, but his, his father is very famous. Okay. Very famous father. And um, I meet this guy and we get to hang out and he was funny. He was confident. He was humble. Mm -hmm. He was successful in his own right. Okay. Um, very, very nice guy and very respectful. And, and, and maybe I overstepped but I don't think uh -oh. I did. Mm -hmm. No, I, I just thought, okay, here's a guy with a very famous last name. Very famous last name. Yeah. And I just, I went up to him and I said, hey man, I, I go, you know, because we're drinking after. I go, I don't want to speak out of line. I go, so if I'm out of line, please tell me. Yeah. I said, you seem like an amazing human being. Uh-huh. What did your dad do that helped you not be his son? You know what I mean? Like you seem well adjusted. You, uh, so I'm right. just thinking of my son. There are so many ways you could have been an asshole. <laughs> right. <laughs> How are you not? <laughs> yeah, you're you're a rich, you're a rich kid. You're a privileged kid. Uh -huh. You have a very famous father <laughs> that I would say ninety percent of the world knows. Yeah. Right. And here here you are, this really great human being. From what I gathered from spending all of Saturday with, uh -huh. right? Because he came to two shows. And hung out. Okay. And I, I you know, and he what goes, what did he say? You're interested too, right? I am. Because, you know, I think of Garrett and I think, you know, I remember growing up and, and they go, oh, Trevino, like the golfer. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine being like, being like, yes, like the golfer, he's my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but Garrett is going to have, oh, like the comedian. Oh yeah. Well, that's my dad. Right. So, you know, he, it was interesting because he goes, man, he goes, he goes, I have a wonderful father. And he goes, and he never, he was never aggressive about the things that, that he wanted us to do. He goes, but he was always there for us. Yeah. He always was, you know, if he was in town, he was there for us. He took me to school in the mornings. He goes, he was very patient, always talked to us. And he goes, and it was very clear that he loved us. And he never gave us pressure to be in his profession. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I was like, oh, wow, okay. You know, and, and I just, I'm always curious, right? I always want to learn, you know, and, and th thank goodness he didn't feel offended by it or, or he wasn't, or at least I, he didn't make me feel like he was yeah. offended by it, but he was very happy to answer my questions. And he goes, man, he goes, you know what? I, I, my dad always told me that I could be anything I wanted to be. And he never gave me pressure to be in his profession. Mm -hmm. And he's, and I, by the way, he goes, I have nine brothers and sisters. There's 10 of us. Oh, wow. He goes, and all of us knew that he loved us. I was going to say, well, that teaches you so many life lessons cool. in itself, right? Being one of 10. So it was really cool to meet him. And it was really cool to see a famous guy's kid just be a great kid. Yeah. Great guy. I say kid. He, I mean, you know, he's um, a very successful businessman himself in, yeah. his, in his field. So I don't want to say kid. He's just younger than me, you yeah. know. But it was just, it was great. And, and by the way, his little group of friends that he was with, mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't many of them. It was um, a kid from, a guy from Houston, his girlfriend, um, and a, another guy. And all of them respectful, nice, easy to hang out with, you know. And, and you also realize that he picked really good friends. And by the way, a very mixed group. Very mixed group. Yeah. You know, so it was really, um, it was really cool for me to meet somebody like him and go, okay, Garrett has a chance. 
you know, Garrett, because I do worry about that. Yeah. You know, we, we just wrote a joke about it. I worry about it. Yeah. I'm concerned about it. I'm, you know, it, it may, it scares me that it's going to affect, affect him in some way because I've met so many people that are a complete disaster because they have a famous parent. Right. You know, and I'm not saying that, that Tom Hanks' kid is a disaster because I don't know him, but you look at the two Hanks boys and they're so very different. What do you mean the two Hanks boys? Tom Hanks You mean the dad boys. versus... No. Oh, he has two boys. I guess I just realized there was one, the one that's the actor. Yeah, Google the other one. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Google the other one. And you just worry, you know, you just yeah. worry. But it was a great weekend. And then I, <laughs> I felt bad because I got home Sunday. Yes. And you were just done. Oh, yeah. You were done. You were yeah. tired. You were sick. I was sick. I mean, I walk in the door and you're like, here, <laughs> like literally hand me my baby. And then it was, yeah. it was, it was great because, you know, I, I want to be outside. I miss my yard. Uh-huh. I miss my barn. Yes. I miss the projects. Yeah. And I get home and I, I have my little, uh, I'm such a dad. I have my yard outfit. Do the plaid pearl snap shirt that you wear with your long sleeves when you cut the grass. Well, no, I have to wear it because I'm, you know, I, I'm out there so much now. Well, I've always been, but I'm like, okay, I really got to start thinking about my skin. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to put sunblock on. So those Wrangler shirts that are real thin, uh-huh. you know, they let the breeze in, but they're sunblock. Yeah. And then I don't want my face getting destroyed by the sun. So I put my little cowboy hat on. I have my little, I put my boots on, right? I put my boots on. I have my little, um, uh, I'm going. It looks like the little Yosemite Sam cowboy hat. Like it curls up real What the fuck, tight dude? Why do I got to be Yosemite Sam? <laughs> Especially with your mustache today. I think that's what it is. It makes me think of Yosemite Sam. My biscuits trip. are burning. <laughs> but so then I, Renee was like, um, well, can you help me? Can you oh help my, me? No, I had a migraine so bad it was making me nauseous. Can you help me? Can, uh, and I'm like, well, yeah, babe, I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy. To, well, you, you come home and you go straight to the damn yard. You go you go outside and that's all you do. That's Girl, all. You I'm do. so annoyed about that yard. You're, if you're, you talk about the yard one more time you're on outside. this damn podcast, you're outside. Every, the minute you get home, you're outside. You're not, and I'm like, but I enjoy being outside. I don't want to be inside. Yes, but I needed your help inside that day. So I came in to help, and then the, the problem is that Renee's grumpy, Renee's sick, Renee's tired. She's like, well, can you help me? And I'm like, yeah, give me the baby. Well, now you're mad. I'm like, mother, I didn't even, I, I didn't even say that I was mad. I'm fi- fine. No, you were grumpy. Well, and, and, well, okay, first of all, I didn't sleep. Yeah, you were tired and grumpy, I too. I didn't sleep, zero sleep, because by the time I got out of Tampa, because we did three shows on a Saturday... I had to be at the airport. Oh, I didn't realize that. You had three on Saturday? I had to be at, at the airport at 3.30 in the morning, and I didn't get done until 2 a.m. Yeah. So we went straight to the airport. Me and Kyle went straight to the airport. Zero sleep. I get home. I just want to work on the yard. You're sick and grumpy. Yeah. There wasn't a hello. How was your trip? No, there was a I, I can barely function. There wasn't a, 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 a fucking cookie. Uh <laughs> Actually, there are cookies. We have a pumpkin cookie jar, and I was like, I don't have anything to put in the cookie jar, but this pumpkin's really cute. So I made cookies. They're probably stale and old, but there but are. Did cookies she tell in me about them? Did she jar. tell me about it? So anyway, hey, anyway, we had a little tiff. We had a little a tiff. tiff. Yes, and then the next day, the next day, I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude, I'm like, you know, I could use a, 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 a thank you when I get home. I could use a. Hey, I know you're tired, but can you help me? I go, can you use your words? Like we're having this argument. She's like, and then Renee, you were like, well, you and you fucking go outside. And you you just want to be outside, right? So we're having this tip yesterday. Rick, you're going to love this. About the yard. She's like, well, maybe, maybe you don't. so over the damn yard. Maybe you don't need to spend all those hours in the yard. And I'm like, well, I enjoy it, right? So I go outside to go wait for Garrett at the bus. And I look in the yard. I'm like, what is that? Somebody trying to sell our house. It looked like a like a for sale sign in our house. Like they wanted us gone. I go, these people want us Mexicans gone, right? They got a sign. So I go over there and guess what, guys? I want yard of the month. Yard of the month. Of all the time of all the days they decided to stick that damn sign in our yard. If I found it first, I would have put it in someone else's yard. So I I, I I call Renee and I'm like, I'm like, hey dude. And she's like, 
what? <laughs> and I go, babe. I go, what were you bitching about? She goes, the yard. I go, well, guess what, dude? Yard of the month, bitch. And then we just had this really great laugh. I'm so HOA, you can take your damn yard of the month sign back. <laughs> and we just laughed our heads off. And I, I just think that sometimes when we're when we're grumpy with each other, that that it's always nice to find that that little <laughs> moment that truly makes us both yeah. laugh. We need to go yeah. get a picture with our yard of the month sign. Oh no, I'm doing a I'm doing a uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing <laughs> or you'll probably see it before the podcast comes out. I'm gonna do a whole like Thank you speech. And like, <laughs> dude, like I just want an Oscar. You can put a podium. You can yes. put a podium. <laughs> like I just want an Oscar. I'm going to go, I'm going to be taking questions. You know, <laughs> like I just want the Super Bowl, man. I'm going to go out there and, and do a deal. But it was, it was funny that, that Renee and I had these. And then, you know, by the way, Renee woke up this morning sick and I was, I was really bummed for you because yeah. you had been fighting like hell to volunteer at the school. Yeah. You finally got your day. And I go, I go, um, we need to be responsible. I said, take a COVID test. Yeah. So she took a COVID test. And then this morning I was like, Hey, um, you know, maybe you shouldn't go. She said, I'm going, <laughs> I'm not contagious. I already checked. I went to the doctor. I'm like, okay. So I was really bummed and, and you seem to be feeling there was like, plenty of hand sanitizer. I sanitized. I'm just snotty. Yeah. You are a snotty little punk. I'm snotty. Um, but we love you guys. And I don't know how this, a lot of times we do these podcasts and I'm like, how did we, we took left turns and right turn. Are we already at our time? Yes. Oh my gosh. We covered dyslexia. We covered Renee being mean to me. Every week. Head, we make, you make sure and get it in there every her, week. Her head's getting bigger. <laughs> you just want to throw oh, that one in there again. And before I do, because I got to ask. What? So, uh, oh, by the way, ticket sales are going fantastic in Vegas. Can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, get your tickets as soon as possible because there's literally no more front row seats. I mean, it's already going to the back. Yeah. Um, but so we're there on the ninth. I have to do a corporate show on the tenth in Allen, Texas. Uh huh. And then we're gonna stay at the Gaylord in um, uh, Dallas. Grapevine. Yeah, Dallas Grapevine. Grapevine. With some friends of ours because they do a beautiful Christmas thing. And well, so if anybody works at the Gaylord and wants to reach out, give us a little VIP <laughs> treatment. We'll take it. But we, we I want to get Renee on the Polar Express train, and they're out of tickets for Friday. Oh, I think tickets are sold out. So if anybody knows anybody that can help us get on the Polar Express The Grapevine train, Polar Express? Yes, please help. Please, please, please. Because, you know, I want Renee and, and Garrett and Delilah to be able to go on the... I, I mean, I'll be doing a show to pay for all of it. But um, <laughs> Renee, <laughs> Renee is going to go. Um, we're hoping to get tickets for that. So we're very excited about it. And then this this weekend is Dallas. Next week is... Um, you're Sacramento? in Arlington. Yeah, I don't have my phone on me. I just ran in the room to record. I, I, I think it's Sacramento and then Richmond, Virginia, and a lot of tour dates still coming up. And then book your New Year's, Houston. Uh, Houston, I'm going to be there for New Year's. It's going to sell out fast, so please. I'm excited. That'll your, be a fun one. It'll be fun. That's a big old club. It'll be it'll be fun to um, to go out there and and bring in the New Year in in Houston, Texas, and hopefully we'll see a bunch <gasps> Can of. Can we announce New York yet? Yes. We're going to New York City. Yes, we are going to New York City on January 7th. Yes. In, One night only. Times Square. Times Square. Here we go. I'm so excited. Very excited about it. So Garrett's uh, excited about that one too, by the way. I oh don't shit, know. Garrett's coming too. We didn't talk about that, but Garrett's excited about it. Too. Dana Point, Florida's on the on the um calendar. Yeah. A lot of great stuff going on. And I, I had one more thing to say, and I'm I I it's, I'm I'm drawing a blank. And it's very frustrating. Las Vegas, New York, your dates. My head getting too big. You brought that up about three times. Yes, it is getting too big. What else? Um, I think that's it. It'll probably come to me later. But please do me a favor. Help us send pies to our service members. You know, that, oh my God, this, this one guy was like, I'm not going to support that. I'll support mothers beating their children. I'm like, whoa, dude, maybe what? we don't need that comment. Maybe we don't put that comment up. Relax, yeah. guy. Pump the brakes. But ultimately, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Please continue to share. Rick and I and, and Renee and Gigi were talking, and, and the podcast is growing, and that's because of you guys. Thank you so, so very much. Please let people know about our podcast. Our perfectly imperfect marriage needs to be out there for people to, uh, to criticize. Judge. <laughs> 
to criticize and judge. Thank you so much. I am Steve Trevino, and that's my beautiful wife, as always, Captain Evil.